scripture reading is from uh, 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 to 17 According to the grace of God given to me like this like a skilled master builder I laid a foundation and then someone else is building upon it let each one take care how he builds upon it for no one can lay a foundation other than which is laid which is Jesus Christ now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold silver precious stones wood hay straw each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives he will receive a reward if anyone's work is burned up he will suffer loss though he himself will be saved but only as through fire do you not know that you are god's temple and god's spirit dwells in you if anyone destroys god's temple god will destroy him for god's temple is holy and you are that temple Good morning church. Morning. I praise and I thank God for yet another opportunity to be here in the midst of all of you and I truly thank and praise God that he has given us another opportunity to remember his sacrifice that is on the table and also he is allowing us to sit before his holy word. Before I begin it is my desire that it is my desire that all of us would sit with a heart that is full of prayer. that god would speak to each and every one of us as we look through his scriptures together in our study in the book of first corinthians we've reached chapter 3 and the last time we had stopped at verses 9 today we will be looking at verses 10 to verse 17 and as we had ended the last sermon on verses 9 i would like to read that verse again and create a foundation for what i want to speak with you today so turn your bibles with me to first corinthians chapter 3 and look at what it says in verse 9 he says for we are god's fellow workers you are god's field you are god's building that is what we ended last time now i want to read a couple of verses to build a context to what verse 10 to verse 17 is talking about now if you remember in the gospel of john especially in chapter 2 jesus uses a very particular phrase in relation to the temple i hope you remember that Jesus looked at the temple in John's gospel chapter 2 and he says destroy this temple because in 3 days I will raise it up. Verse 20 onwards Jesus says the scripture quotes that Jesus was talking about his body when he said that he would raise up the temple in 3 days he was not talking about the physical structure in itself but he was talking about his own physical body because he knew that he was going to go to the cross. he was going to die on the cross of calvary and in 3 days that body would be risen again jesus referred to himself as the temple of the holy god would you now turn your bibles with me to the book of ephesians chapter 2 and look at verses 21 and 22 ephesians chapter 2 verse 21 and 22 where there it says in him the whole building is joined together and raises to become a holy temple in the lord and in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which god lives by his spirit now you notice the transition here in the gospel of john chapter 2 jesus calls himself as the temple when he says that he will raise himself up in 3 days he says that he is the temple of god now you read here in ephesians he calls the church as the temple of god the same phrase that we saw in the book of first corinthians not only not only are you called as the temple but we together are called as the building of god we are being built together by the lord jesus christ christ was the temple we today have become that temple that building that belongs to the lord jesus christ can i read one more verse if you turn to first corinthians chapter 6 
and verse 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. There it says, Don't, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own, you were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Again, the word of God very strictly emphasizes that you and I are the temple of the living God. Indeed, it was true that once Jesus became the temple for you and for me, Jesus became that building. But today, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, together we are known as the temple of the living God. The building that is being built together in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you keep this in your mind, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, there Apostle Paul, then he goes on to say, for we are God's fellow workers, we are God's field, we are God's building. Now what I'm basically trying to say this morning is that a born-again believer, listen to me very carefully, a born-again believer individually is called as the temple or the building of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, but collectively as a church, we are also called as the temple or the building of the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I making sense? You know, as an individual, every born-again believer is called as the temple or the building of the Lord Jesus Christ. And collectively, together, not only are we called as a church, but we are also called as the temple or the building of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to pose a very serious question to each and every one of us, myself included. What kind of a builder am I today? Am I building my own spiritual Christian life as a born-again believer? And collectively as a church, how much are we building God's church? As an individual, how much of effort am I putting as a builder of the Lord Jesus Christ? And collectively, how are we building God's church? That's the essence of what I want to share with you today. What kind of a builder am I? Now when we say that we are the temple of the living God, when we say that we are God's building, how was this possible? How did it become possible for you and for me to become known as this temple? Verses 11 of chapter 3. Verse 11 it says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. There is only one foundation. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one salvation. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one way how you and I can become the child of God. How? That is when you and I realize that we are sinners. When you and I realize that we need a savior. When you and I look at the cross. When you and I look at that foundation which is the Lord Jesus Christ. When we ask for the forgiveness of our sin. When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ into our life as our personal Lord and Savior, that is the day. That is how you and I become the child of God. And you and I become a part of this building. You and I become a part of this temple of this living God. For it says, there is no other foundation that can be laid other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you also just turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 4? The book of Acts chapter 4. And look at what it says in verse 12. The book of Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. There it says, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. How did this temple come into existence? How did this building come to be formed? It is simply by placing your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. There is no other foundation other than the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, as we look at God's word this morning, I want to ask you a very serious question. Even before you begin to build your temple, even before you begin to understand and realize from God's word that he is building us together, I want you to think of that day. And be sure of that experience that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us all to examine that day that we ask the Lord to forgive us. When we realize that there is no other way, no other truth, no other life other than the Lord Jesus Christ. If you and I have come into that salvation experience, I want to encourage by telling you, we are all part of that building. And God desires for you and for me, to not only build our own lives, but also to be busy in building his church. 
what kind of a builder am I in the presence of God? Come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You know, when you look at this passage, Apostle Paul talks of three different kinds of builders in this passage. And that are the three kind of builders that I want to share with us as an encouragement from God's holy word. Three kind of builders that Apostle Paul talks of. And I pray that God would allow us all, myself included, to examine and see which category do we fall into. The three kind of builders that you see in this passage. Number one, Paul talks of that person who is an expert builder. Paul talks of the expert builder in this passage. Now look at verse 10. Look at what Apostle Paul says in verse 10. Firstly, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as an expert builder. And someone else is building on it. But each one should be careful how he builds. There is, there are those Christians who are the expert builders. They are expert in building their own life. Not only that, they are expert in building the church of God. And Apostle Paul says, I am an expert builder. You know, many a times in the book of Apo- in, in his epistles, you see Apostle Paul talks of himself as an example, right? Many a times he says, he says, follow my example as I follow the example of, of Christ. And he says here, I am an expert building, a builder. I'm very careful as to how I build my own life. And I'm very careful as to how I build the church of God. You notice verse 10, the last part, he says, but each one should be careful In how he builds. So who is an expert builder? Someone who is very careful. A person, a brother, a sister in the Lord Jesus. Who is very careful in how they build their own life. They are very careful in how they build the church. They are not looking at their own agenda. But they are worried about what is the Lord's agenda in their own life. It is a brother or a sister who is an expert builder who is very careful as to how they build their own life and therefore then they build the church. So how can a person become an expert builder? How can you and I motivate, encourage ourselves from God's word into becoming an expert builder of God? You know, I was telling you about the two aspects. Number one, let's think about our own lives. Let's think about our own lives. Even before we can think of building the church of God, you and I need to build our own lives. Not me building your life, not you building my life, me building my own spiritual Christian life. You remember the Sunday school story that we often talk about, about the wise man who built his house upon the upon the rock. And you know, you see that in Matthew and Mark, but I like the expression that is used in the Gospel of Luke. If you turn to Luke chapter 6, You know, the same story is mentioned over there. But look at how, uh, you know, the spirit is writing there in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. There it says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my word and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. This is an expert builder. An expert builder is not only someone who is worried about the foundation, who has not only got his foundations right, but he is someone who knows what the Lord has laid into his heart and basically he is someone who practices what he preaches. There you know you beginning in the beginning of verse 40 says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord? Why do you just simply call me Lord, Lord, but you do not do anything that I tell you to do? This is the man who is the expert builder. How do we know? He hears what I say, and not only does he hear what I say, but he also puts it into practice. That is the expert builder who listens to the voice of the Lord and he knows what the voice of the Lord tells him to do and therefore he's aware of his foundation. He digs it deep enough to make the foundation strong and he practices what the Lord tells him to do. That is the expert builder. That is why his foundation does not shake. That is why even though how strong the storms comes upon his life, no matter even how high the waves would come, he's still able to stand firm. Because he practices what the Lord tells him to do. And how many of us, myself included, would spend time with God's word daily, would pray to God daily, getting the spiritual nourishment that we require so as to know what the Lord is telling me to do and when I know, I will be able to practice it. 
You know what is the problem by just simply saying, Lord, Lord? You know what is the problem in just having a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, James, he says in his books, even the devil, even the devil also knows who the Lord is. Right? And not only do they know who the Lord is, but because of their knowledge, they, they tremble. But what is the problem? That knowledge does not put, that does not come into their, their own lives. It does not cause them to commit, uh, to confess their sins and ask for the forgiveness of the Lord. Let us not fool ourselves into just simply saying, Lord, Lord, I have a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That in itself is not enough. But you and I need to practice that knowledge into our Christian lives. Show forth that Christian knowledge through our deeds, our actions, the way we talk. It is only then you and I begin to be known as an expert builder. That is in relation to our own personal lives. I said not only are we supposed to build our own personal lives, but we are also supposed to be building the... Building the... And how do we become expert builders of the church? You know, there Apostle Paul says, right? I myself consider to be an expert builder. When Prashant was reading, his version said, a master builder, right? And some of the versions have master builder. You know, master builder, that word, that's where we get the word architect from. That's where we get the word architect from. And an architect or a master builder is is, is someone who knows, who is able to direct the work of God and he assigns this work to the different people that are there in God's church. That is who a master builder is. A master builder in the church of God is someone who does not like to show who he is, but he knows how to assign the work of God to God's people. He knows everybody's gifts. He knows everybody's abilities. He knows everybody's talent. And he's able to distribute these gifts amongst the people of God. So that together... You and I exhibit our gifts and therefore collectively we are building God's church. You see that? When you and I invest time in building our own lives as an expert builder, slowly you and I will not feel like showing ourselves in God's presence. But rather I want to help you grow in the Lord. I want to help you grow in the Lord. I want to help you grow in the Lord. I know the task that is to be done and I know the people who can get it done and as an architect of God, I am able to allow these things to go forward. That is who a master builder is. And Apostle Paul says that I consider myself to be an expert builder. Do we fall into that category, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, this morning? Can we take a moment and look into our own spiritual Christian lives and can we ask ourselves that question, how much of an effort have you and I put into building our own lives? How much of an effort have you and I put into building God's church? The last one month, the last three months, the last one year, has the name of Jobin been more prominent? Or have I allowed God's purpose to be fulfilled in the believers that are there in the church of God? Am I an expert builder? That is something that I would like for each and every one of us to think about. How can we do that? Verses, 10, verses 11, by knowing that that foundation rests in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's look at verse 12. If any man builds on this foundation, which is that foundation? The Lord Jesus Christ. What is that foundation? Salvation. Using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw. You know, you see there are two kinds of items that are mentioned here. There is the gold, there is the precious stones, and then there is the silver. And then on the other hand, there is the wood, there is the hay, and then there is the straw. You know, when you and I build the church, we need materials. We need to use materials in order to build this church. And our motives, our motives is what is explained in verses 12. Whenever I do anything in the church with holy and good motives... That in the sight of God is considered as gold, silver and precious stones. And whenever I do anything in the church or in the presence of God's people with an evil motive, the material that I'm using is wood, hay and straw. Am I making sense? Yes? So my evil motives are considered to be wood, hay and straw. And my good motives are considered to be my gold and precious stones and silver. 
So when I am doing anything in the church, whether I am preaching in the church, whether I am leading in the church, whether whether I am discipling in the church, whether I am mentoring in the church, whether I am visiting people in the church, I am praying for people in the world, no matter what I do, what matters most more than anything else is my motives. Can you understand what my motives are? Yes or no? No. But who understands our motives? And in the presence of God, we are using these materials to build His church. And I must confess, and we all need to confess, many a times we have been building it with gold, silver and precious stones. But there are a lot of our works in the presence of God considered as wood, straw or hay. Can you just turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 14? The book of Romans chapter 14 and verses 19. Look at what it says. Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Can somebody read that verse for me? Romans chapter 14 and verse 19. Okay, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. So brothers and sisters, that's the question we need to ask ourselves. What am I doing in Calvary Bible Fellowship? When I talk to people, when I engage in fellowship with people, when I am mentoring people, when I am sharing the gospel, when I stand here and preach, when I am involved in my cell group, when I sing, no matter what I do, am I doing all that God has asked me to do for mutual edification? Am I doing all that I am doing because I really want to see you grow? Then the material that I am using is gold, sil gold, silver and precious stones. But if I'm only doing it so as to get a name, so that people will talk good about me, so that on this earth you will say great things about me in front of 10 people, so that I will feel good about myself, the only thing that we are using is wood, hay and straw. So what's the problem if I use wood, hay and straw? So what's the problem if I use these kind of materials? Because of what it says in verse 13. What does it say in verse 13? It says, His work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. You see that? Brothers and sisters, why should we be concerned with the materials that we use to build God's church? Why? Because one day there is a judgment seat that is coming. One day you and I will stand in the judgment seat of Christ. We will stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes, we will worship Him. Yes, we will take our crowns, throw it at His feet. We will say there is no one but you worthy to receive it. And after that the book of Revelation says He will open a book of the accounts. And you and I will have our gold, our precious stones, our silver and our wood, our hay and our straw. And then the Lord will ask Jobin, what have you done for me? And we will say, Lord, look, this is all that I have done for you. And verse 13 there very clearly states, and God's fire will test the quality of each man's work. That means one day you and I, all of us who are born again believers, will stand in the presence of God. There is no exemption for anybody. You and I will stand in the presence of God. I can fool you in Calvary Bible Fellowship with the way I live my life. You can fool me with the way you live your life in Calvary Bible Fellowship. I can come on Sunday. I can preach and I can show you like as if I'm walking as close as I am to God. But on that day, on that judgment day, my work will be put into the fire. My gold, my silver, my wood, my hay will go through that fire. And all of us We'll have to give an account of our work. Can you turn with me to 2 Corinthians in chapter 5? 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 and verse 10. What does it say there? Can somebody read that? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body. Okay. Okay. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive what is due to him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Good motives, bad motives. The next time when you and I do something in the church, the next time when you and I do anything as a born again believer, let's ask ourselves, what is the motive behind it? Because the Lord will test the quality of each man's work. Come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and let's look at verse 14. 
if what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If what he built survives, he will receive his reward. On the judgment day, you and I will come with our gold, our silver, our precious stones, good motives. We will also be standing there with wood, hay and straw, evil motives. And God will put this through the fire. Let me ask you a question. Out of all of these items that will go through the fire, what will remain? Gold, precious stones and? And what is that talking about? Good motives. And only for that you and I will receive the reward. It's simple and so clear, right? You and I will think when we are on this earth that, you know, we should be appreciated for things like this. That, you know, there is nobody else who's done things like this. No, on that day, God's work, God's light, His fire will reveal it. And when it goes through the fire, there's going to be a lot of ash that's going to come out. And only the gold, the precious stones and the silver will remain, which talks about the pure good motives that we had. And only for that, you and I will receive the reward. My dear brothers and sisters, who is an expert builder? As we read in verse 10, he or she is that person who is very careful as to how they build. They are very careful in how they build their own lives. They are very careful in how they build the church of God. Because they know that when they come here, it is not them, but it is Christ who needs to be seen. They are very careful with their motives whenever they do anything. They also are encouraged of the fact that nobody might notice what they do on this earth because they know one day when they stand in the presence of God, the Lord Jesus will applaud for them. And that is all that matters to them. I look at my own life and I see that yes, there is a lot of shortcomings and I have not reached there yet. But I want to encourage all of you together along with me. Can we push ourselves into becoming that expert builder? Can we be very careful about our motives? When I come to church, will we make a promise that I will only say, do, feel things that are godly in the sight of a holy God? That I will not put fuel to any fire that I will not gossip, that I will not hurt, that I will not put down, but I will do all that I can do in order to build my brothers and my sisters in the church of God. And by the grace that is given to me, I will do all that I can to become an expert builder of God. The expert builder, number one, Apostle Paul says. Number two, verse 15, Apostle Paul talks about the unwise builder. Apostle Paul talks about the unwise builder. Verse 15, if it is burned up, he will suffer loss. He himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. You know, this is talking about that born again believer who is born again, who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, but they have no works to show forth it. And it says that he will suffer loss, but he will be saved only as one going through the flames. Now, what does that mean? Because you are a born again believer, you will definitely be in heaven. Because anybody who accepts the Lord Jesus Christ, they will never be lost. They will be there in heaven. But they will have absolutely no works to show the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what the verse actually means. He is that or she is that unwise builder. They are not careful about how they live their lives. There are many born again believers like that. I know I am on my way to heaven and that's all that matters to me. I will do all that I want to do. I am not careful about sin in my life. I am not bothered about the hurt that I cause. I am not even bothered about making any necessary changes in my life. That's the person who will stand in the presence of God. They are there because they have the ticket of salvation. But all their works will be burned away. They will have nothing to show forth to the Lord. Absolutely nothing to show forth to the Lord Jesus Christ. He himself will be saved, but like as if someone is passing through the flames. I remember so many examples in the Old Testament. I think of the, I think of the first king of Israel, the great man Saul. The Bible very clearly states that he was a head taller than everybody else. The first king leading the people of Israel. But you come to 1st Samuel chapter 17 when he was supposed to fight the giant. Where do you see the king? He's inside the, he's inside the tent. And that's you and me many a times in our Christian lives. We are supposed to lead. We are supposed to do great things for the Lord. But we are inside the tent. You know why? 
because we don't want anybody to see our knees knocking against each other are we that unwise builder we are not careful with how we build our lives we don't spend time with god's word much we don't spend time in prayer we just go through breeze through the day probably just read a verse no my brothers and sisters we really need to be careful that we are not those kind of people who are unwise in how we build our christian lives because all of these people will be there in the presence of god but when the lord asks job and what have you done we will have nothing to show him nothing to show him number 1 paul talks about the expert builder number 2 he talks about the unwise builder and number 3 he talks about the destructive builder he talks about the destructive builder look at what it says in verses 16 and 17 can somebody read that verse for me verse 16 and 17 know ye know that ye are the temple of god and the spirit of god dwelleth in you if any man defy the temple of god mm. him shall god destroy ha huh. for the temple of god is holy hmm. which temple ye are okay you look at what it says don't you know that you yourself are god's temple you know how you know that you are the temple of god was 16 it ends to say because the spirit of god lives in you if the spirit of god lives in your temple in your body that means the fruit of the spirit needs to come out you and i need to show the word the actions of the spirit you and i will do all that the spirit tells us to do and then verse 17 talks about the destructive builder if any body destroys god's temple god will one day destroy him and this cannot be in reference to a born again believer because god will never destroy a born again believer but it's talking about so called christians who have fooled themselves into thinking that they are on their way to heaven they are so called christians who might be born in christian families who have christian names who come to church on sundays there are many believers like that there are so many believers even if you ask them a, if you ask them a point blank question are you going to heaven yes how do you know i'm not really sure it's talking about those kind of christians they are actually destroying their own life they fooled themselves into thinking because they become a part of the ritual of the church they think that when they do certain things as long as they stand up as long as they are a part of the church of god they are on their way to heaven no believe no my brothers and sisters that is not the case don't you remember jesus himself said he says you remember how the roads are You remember how the roads are there are two kinds of road there is one road that is wide there are a lot of attractions on the side of that road but that is the road that leads to but how is the size of the road that leads to heaven it's narrow it's narrow and i am giving this verse as a warning to you my brothers and sisters and my desire is my in my heart is that there would be nobody sitting here who has fooled himself into thinking that you are on your way to heaven without being exactly sure about it if you have not become a child of god the bible very clearly states you are destroying the temple of god and the bible goes on to say that the god will one day destroy all unbelievers how do we know whether we are not walking in accordance to god's word let us look at our sensitivity towards sin if there is a particular sin a particular habit that i am not willing to change but i am happy in the way that i am living my bro- my brothers and sisters can we be serious about our life can we for a moment go back home and examine maybe meet up with someone here in the church or our elders can we say i am worried i am not sure about my walk with the lord i am walking in a particular way of life and i seem to be okay with it that means that there's something seriously wrong with our christian life Don't you know that you are the temple of the living God and the spirit of God lives in you if anybody destroys God's temple if anybody destroys his own physical life if any person does anything that they do that is a is a disturbance in their physical life God will one day say I don't know who you are please get away from my presence and at the judgment seat of Christ there is no second chance there is absolutely no second chance for those of us who 
understand and accept and believe that we are the children of God verse 17 in the last part it says for God's temple is sacred and you are that temple why did jesus christ say that i am the temple why did jesus christ say break down this building and in 3 days i will raise it up why did he refer to himself as the temple of the living god because you and i know that a temple is the meeting place between man and god that is why you when you go on the road even if there's a mosque even though there's a temple even though there's a church and if somebody's passing by they would stop they would look at that holy place and they would do something because everybody in this world irrespective of what background we come from we know that the temple is the meeting place between man and god and jesus christ says now i am the temple in the sense you don't need to go to a holy place in order to meet god accept me as your personal lord and savior and i will live in your heart i am the meeting place between you and god you get that that's why he called himself the temple he says you don't have to go anywhere else wherever you are seated you just need to confess your sins you just need to tell god that you are sorry you just need to tell god i realize that i've been living a life of sin god i ask you to forgive me and god will come and live into your heart and the best part is not only jesus lives into your heart but when he does you also become the temple of the living god and how should we treat the temple of the living god what does it say there it says we should t- treat it to be as sacred a secret my dear brothers and sisters what kind of a builder am i am i an expert builder am i careful how i build my life and in turn am i careful how i build the church of god what are the motives that i have when i do anything in calvary bible fellowship whatever it may be whatever the elders have asked me to do why do i do it do i do it with good holy motives that means then i'm building the church with gold silver and precious stones or am i building it with evil motives with my own agenda then all that i have is wood hay and straw can i remind all of us one day you and i will stand in the presence of god and all of these works will be put to the fire all our evil motives will be burned away and only for our good motives will you and i receive the reward that comes from god am i an unwise builder am i like the foolish man who built his house upon the sand so that when the storms came when the waves were too high when we have problems with our jobs when we are involved in wrong relationships when our marriage is not working out when we have difficulties whatever problems you and i find it difficult to pray to god am i an unwise builder or am i a destructive builder have i been living fooling myself into thinking that i'm on my way to heaven if there is anybody here i would like to extend that hand of salvation as we read there is no salvation under heaven other than the lord jesus christ and all you need to do wherever you are sitting if you hear my voice ask the lord for the forgiveness of your sins and ask him to come and live into your hearts all of us who have accepted the lord jesus christ are we prepared for the judgment day of the lord when we will stand in his presence and give an account of how we live our lives i want to just close with this story i shared the story earlier before so if you're hearing this again please forgive me there's a story told about three people on their camel walking across a desert and as they were walking across a desert all of a sudden they heard a voice and the voice said stop and get down from your camel and all these three people were very confused in a desert when no one has seen a voice but they chose to obey that voice and they got down from their camels the voice continued to say look on the ground and the stones that you see there on the ground take those stones and put them into your pocket Well, wow, it is strange enough that the voice told us to stop and get off the camp and now the voice is telling us to do this but they still chose to obey that so they took those stones and they put it into their pockets the voice said if you do not look at those stones until the next day i promise you you will be both glad and sad <laughs> if you do not look at the stones until the next day we will be both glad and sad anyway somehow they chose to obey the voice i don't know how they managed to sleep through the night early the next morning the three of them got up and they were excited and they put their hand into their pockets and they were surprised that those stones had turned into diamonds and rubies and emeralds and precious stones and at that time they understood the meaning of that promise that they would be both glad and sad they were glad that those stones had turned into precious rubies and diamonds but they were sad that they had not picked 
some more they were very sad that they had not picked some more i believe that there will be so many born again believers in the presence of god on the judgment day like that when they see all that the lord has done for them when they see his nails his 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 marks when they see how much of agony the lord had actually gone from them uh, gone gone for them and when they understand the price that christ has really paid and the reward that he is giving to us the bride i'm sure there would be many who would stand there and say i wish i wish i had a little more time this is the time this is the time for you and for me as a church the lord might come at the end of this day but are we prepared to meet him and say i have done all that the lord has asked me to do can we ask the lord lord i don't want to be a destructive builder i'm not satisfied with being an unwise builder i want to be an expert builder building my own life and therefore in turn building the church of god may the lord bless us can we all close our eyes in prayer Our gracious God, our loving Father, we come into your presence thanking you for allowing us to remember your sacrifice for us on the cross. Thank you for this table that reminds us of your body broken, your blood that was shed. There is no salvation under heaven except the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for speaking to us from thy word, enable us to examine our own lives in the light of what we heard. Lord, we confess that we have a lot of shortcomings, Lord. We confess that as a church there is a lot more that we can do. Would you enable us Lord to be aware of the fact that you are coming soon and until that day comes enable us not to be destructive or unwise but to move one step closer into becoming an expert builder for the Lord. Enable us to build our own lives and therefore in turn collectively together building the church of God. Thank you so much for loving us for redeeming us from the on the cross of Calvary. and we love you so much for who you are and for what you've done for us on the cross except all that we give you because there is no one else worthy to receive it and all of this we ask in the name of our soon coming lord and our savior jesus christ